Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Peter Samar Shail and today me and my group members Muhammad Shakil, Makbul Hassan and Luqman Shabir are going to discuss the supply chain of Walmart. So the introduction. Walmart Incorporation, formerly known as Walmart Stores Incorporation, is an American multinational retail corporation that operates a chain of hypermarkets, discount department stores, and grocery stores. It's headquartered in Pentelvin, Arkansas in the United States. Walmart uh, operates approximately 11,500 stores under 56 banners in 27 countries and e-commerce stores in over 10 countries. They employ approximately 2.2 million associates around the world, about which 1.5 million is in the United States alone. Moving on, we are going to map the supply chain of Walmart via flowchart. So let's say we have three different manufacturing plants for three different products. Let's say the first one is for t-shirts, the second one is for shampoos and the third one is for soaps. So each of these manufacturing plants, they transport their products to the distribution center via trucks and then uh, these products are transported to their respective retail stores via trucks again. Along the way, strict communication is maintained by the company headquarters. Okay, uh, now uh, let's discuss uh, the supply chain we got. We have right here. So we have uh, no, we have some products of Walmart have uh, an overseas manufacturer. They supply the product to the global merchandising center, uh, and then that product is shipped to the distribution centers, which in turn ships them back to their respective uh, Walmart stores, and in the end. Uh, the customer receives the product. They also have a domestic manufacturing supplier uh, which transports the product via truck to the distribution center, the local distribution center and then that uh, distribution center ships them to their respective stores and in the end to the customer. There's also uh, a domestic manufacturer supplier which uh, ships uh, the product directly to the stores without ever needing the distribution center and in the end the customer receives their desired product. Now we have a graph of uh, the number of stores of Walmart by division from 2009 to 2018 here. So the blue section represents the Walmart's US uh, segment, the black, the black line uh, represents the Walmart international segment and the green one is Sam Club segment so we can we can clearly see that with each passing year the total number of Walmart stores has seen an increase and rise in the number of stores now moving on to the total number of stores by the countries from this graph it is evident that, that India has the lowest number of uh, Walmart stores uh, at 22 and Mexico has the highest number at 2442 now the wo wo uh, who are the Walmart suppliers? So we got Gillette, Hewlett Packard, Johnson and Johnson, Kimberly Clark, Kraft Foods, Nestle, Procter and Gamble. The Walmart distribution system. S the suppliers include vendors who supply the product, they deliver it directly to the store, and supplies are in high volume. We got the Walmart distribution center where the product goes through cross docking and, and hub, spo hub and spoke and in around 48 hours the product is delivered to the Walmart store where it is placed in shelves and these stores are located in rural and urban towns and then the purchaser or the customer buys the product from Walmart at very low prices approximately 90 percent of all Americans are located within 15 miles of a Walmart. Around 190 distribution centers are in the United States. One distribution center can serve around 90 to 100 Walmart stores. Every distribution center measures around 1 million square feet with 600 workers unloading and shipping around 200 plus dryers on a daily basis.
continuing with the presentation walmart have semi push or pull system which means that they need to rebuild their stock every fixed period of time depending upon the trends and data received interesting thing about the walmart is their competitive advantage that is to sell every product at lowest of their competition this advantage comes from the high volume of products with lower margin and one stop shopping more than excellent strategy in supply chains make them stand in the company thanks to their large fleet of trucks trailers drivers they are able to manage outbound and inbound logistics in super efficient way using vmi edi as inbound and a cross docking and hub spoke model as an outbound here comes the advanced truck that walmart have as their logistics support they have a super cube trucks as a stylish vehicle so vmi system as their inbound logistics vendor receive regular updates of retailer inventory and when it reaches to the reorder point level the vendor issues an inverse purchase and initiate replenishment here is the flow time analysis of vmi the customer made a purchase and then the store will be restocked the shelves with merchant so in edi services everything is gone electronically Uh, the trading partner sends uh, purchase order and your company acknowledges it electronically thank you usama and lukman now i will be explaining cross docking to you cross docking it is a practice in which we unload materials from incoming truck and load materials directly into outbound trucks with little or no storage in between this technique allows greater supply chain efficiencies now here you can see there are four different receiving lines with different products and products are being manually unloaded by workers on the automatic conveyor belts once they are unloaded manually products pass through high speed camera tunnel and then they are labeled while still in motion so you can see the labeling being done over here while the products are still in motion and here you can see they are verified again so here you can see there are four receiving lines and each receiving line has its own products all the products from these four receiving lines are transported through the common conveyor to the shipping side of the facility before they can be diverted to their specified shipping lane the weight is recorded and they are scanned again for the destination and then they can be diverted to the actual shipping lane they belong so you can see the products being diverted to four different shipping lanes they go through final verification scan and then they are manually loaded to the trucks again for shipping to its respective walmart stores thanks to these hard workers who continuously work day and night to make this possible so i am sure now you will be in a great position to discuss the concept of cross stocking and you will be crystal clear about it the diagram you're seeing now is of hub and spoke model it is a centralized integrated logistic system designed to keep costs down walmart has embraced this concept of hub and spoke distribution model allowing the company to reduce costs and now finally i'll be discussing about the challenges and constraints faced by walmart sustainability has become one of the main challenges for walmart for example walmart abandons its own stores also walmart is a big threat to the environment causing problems like habitat loss water pollution increased driving and air pollution they also face criticism due to various lawsuits regarding low wages poor working conditions sex discrimination restriction in supplier corporate reputation is at stake due to this the challenges here are how walmart can control the balance between low pricing system and employee benefits another big constraint is differentiation in global culture when expanding it's a big challenge to satisfy a global customer now as you are aware of the challenges and constraints faced by walmart makbul hassan will brief you guys about the risks faced by walmart and their outsourcing strategy then in the end you will be shown a video clip 
which will give you guys a complete overview of how Walmart actually operates. Now I will hand over to Mr. Makbul and he will be explaining you about his portion of the presentation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There are certain possible risks which can affect the career in the business of Walmart. The first one is supplier risks. They are totally depend upon their suppliers. Eighty percent of merchandise came from China, and any sanction of China by U.S. can also disaster for Walmart. Low price, competitor, pandemic, market, and unforeseen delay also affect the career of Walmart. Why and how Walmart outsource? Walmart should outsource non-core activities like finance and accounting to private firm due to management problem walmart can outsource human resources to some third party this help us to focus on the core operation and improve supply chain this t-shirt is on sale at walmart in the usa at an incredible five dollars and ninety seven cents how is this price possible made miles away from the shop, shipped around the world, stored in a warehouse, and then on to the shelves of a store. Of course, Walmart is a giant. It's the world's biggest retailer and the third largest employer. In the USA alone, Walmart has more than 4,600 stores in which 130 million people shop each week. And around the world, every second, 400 people shop at one of the 10,700 stores that Walmart has in 27 countries. Walmart had revenues of $466.1 billion in net sales in 2012. How can Walmart stay at the top with that extraordinary profitability when it's selling t-shirts at $597? let us begin by having a look at a Walmart store in the USA. The average hourly wage of the workers that sell this t-shirt is $8.81, which translates to an annual pay of $15,576, based upon Walmart's full-time status of 34 hours per week. This is significantly below the federal poverty level. Here we have a first hint. And what about benefits? If you're a part-time employee, which most Walmart workers are, you don't get any health care coverage by the company. Walmart holds another record on this. It is the employer that has the highest percentage of workers having to rely on government assistance, thus receiving more than $1 billion per year in subsidies from the U.S. taxpayers. Faced with these conditions, don't Walmart workers in the USA complain? They do. But every worker who speaks out faces instant retaliation measures, ranging from disciplinary hearings to hour cuts and even dismissal. But let's get back to the journey of our t-shirt. Walmart is the largest mover and seller of goods in the world. Most of the goods sold at Walmart in the U.S. are made abroad. When arriving in the country, they're stored in giant warehouses run by third-party contractors hired by Walmart. Agency workers and day laborers work inside these warehouses in an extremely stressful and dangerous environment where injuries and accidents are common. They're paid very low wages tied to a piece rate system, receive no benefits, and face retaliation if they report injuries or complain about conditions. And what do we find if we follow the t-shirt back to its place of origin? Walmart's supply chain comprises more than 100,000 suppliers and millions of workers. The company's purchasing practices aim to get the maximum flexibility and the lowest prices from its suppliers, who in order to do business with Walmart, pass on these pressures to their own workers, with very poor pay and often dangerous working conditions. Our t-shirt is made in Bangladesh, the world's second most important garment producer. Bangladesh textile workers are among the lowest paid in the world. 60 to 80 hour work weeks, no overtime pay, no health care, and illegal subcontracting are common. Workers who speak out about these conditions and try to organize regularly face intimidation, dismissal, and even violence. Walmart is the second largest buyer of garments from Bangladesh. 
a country where more than half of textile factories are vulnerable to collapse and fires with fatal consequences have become commonplace. After the largest factory fire in the history of Bangladesh, in which 117 workers died, Walmart explicitly refused to pay more to upgrade Bangladeshi factory buildings. And even after the deadliest industrial accident in the history of the world, when the Rana Plaza building collapsed and 1,129 people died in horrendous dollar and 97 cent t-shirt was made right here at Rana Plaza, that would mean that Walmart is a top company because it aims to cut costs at any price across its giant supply chain and stores without any consideration for ethical standards or social responsibilities. And this certainly doesn't only affect those supplying and working for Walmart. With its size and reach, Walmart is dictating standards that affect workers in all industries and all around the world, leading the global race to the bottom for working conditions.